Okay, so I'm gonna try making paint for the first time. I've got all of my gear and ingredients gathered. And there are a few different options when it comes to making paint. Um, I'm making watercolor paint specifically to start, but I am gonna try making oil paint and a few other things as well. But the ingredients that I have gathered are this gum arabic powder and there actually is gum arabic by Windsor and Newton already in a liquid form so I might give this a try at some point. This is another option I got this through choosing keeping and this is a binder that's already mixed that you can use for making watercolors so I'm going to try this one as well in addition to my homemade variety. I also have glycerin and honey and these are used as uh, honey as a preservative and also a binder and glycerin is used as a, a vegan alternative but also um, in different recipes I've read glycerin is used to kind of combat the stickiness of the honey so I'm going to do a mixture of honey and glycerin and then I have clove essential oil which is a preservative and oxgall liquid by Windsor and Newton, which is used to increase the flow of the watercolor. So I'm gonna add this as well. And I'm just gonna give it a try and see what happens. And then for holding the watercolors, I have plastic whole pans and half pans. And then another option could be, I have some handmade um, pans, paint pans. These are by Sylvan Clay Works. These are vintage French escargot pots, which these make fantastic little paint pots. And then you can also get palettes that have wells in them that you can fill. And I have some that are new and some that are vintage. Here's a vintage one that was actually used for staining um, dental wear, I guess dentures probably. <laughs> And it's a fantastic paint palette though. I got it off of Etsy and it has this great ceramic cover. So there's a whole variety of things. You can also use paint tubes if you want to, um, but I'm gonna make pan paints. And then I have distilled water in a kettle that I boiled. So, and some measuring cups. And then to measure out the liquids, I have a little plastic pipette here. So the recipe I'm using is one that I found on Natural Earth Paints website. And then I kind of, after reading through it, put together my own recipe and I'll share that. Um, I am testing it out. So while I do think this is a good source to get it from, this is not necessarily like, I have not experienced it. It's not a tried and true recipe for me. And when I've asked people who make paint, like, okay, what's the tried and true recipe? They, they all say, well, it depends on what you want. Um, that's why there are a lot of different paint brands. That's why different paints behave differently. So there's not really like a right or wrong way. It's just what your preferences are. So um, I'm sure there's a wrong way, but it's what your preferences are. So I'm gonna do a cup of hot water. So do that and I'm mixing it in a little jar a half a cup of Arabic powder Okay, and then I'm gonna mix in the honey and the glycerin, which it says a fifth of a cup. So it's just a little less than a fourth of a cup. So I think I'm gonna try half honey and half glycerin and just see what that does. What I've read is that these can be interchangeable. So I feel like using half and half might give me the best of both. We'll see, that's a theory. 
glycerin is supposed to improve the the flow of the paint and like I said also kind of combat the stickiness so that's probably about a fifth of a cup it's just a little less than a fourth get this all in there okay and then we're gonna do two drops of clove essential oil and two drops of the ox gall. And this is what I'm gonna use the, the pipette for. So for straining, I think what I'm gonna do is just get one of those little powdered sugar strainers and just use that for paint making specifically. Uh, Cheesecloth would probably work really well too. And okay, so now I'm going to mix, it says one tablespoon of honey with nine tablespoons of the mixture. So I'm gonna use a teaspoon instead. And I'm going to, I'll go ahead and use honey this time. Okay, and then nine tablespoons of this. And having spilled this all over the place, it is pretty sticky. <laughs> and there is one little clump in there. It'll just kind of fish out. Okay, so this is our watercolor mixture to work with. This is our watercolor base to set aside. And you can refrigerate this for about a week or so. And this is what we're gonna use right now. 